Because of the following primetime presentation, Simon and Simon will not be seen this week, but will return next week at this time. So you've worked at Channel 43 for how many years? Since 43 and 19 combined. Oh, 43 and 19 since 1989. So okay. what is that? 34 years. Okay. Right? And so Coming up. tell me, you started to tell me the other day how you got the job at Channel then 19. Then at 19. I don't say the, I don't say the C word for Channel 19. It's okay. just 19. Um, so yes, being a uh, Hudson resident and part of the uh, my friend Sergio Uriarte got me involved with the um, Hudson JCs and met a, um, the program, I think it was the program director at that time, Dick Sullivan. And um, told them, you know, I was interested in television. And it was at that point I was kind of making, I had sent resumes to all the Cleveland markets. And I was going to say at the end of October, I was going to start, like, getting out of the state, you know, right? Try to stay local first. Um, but he was like, hey, yeah, come on down. And, you know, we can always use, like, intern help or whatever, running cameras and things like that. So I went down and started in the production department. He told me who to talk to. And uh, so I was doing public affairs shows or even going out in remotes and things like that. And then the on-air um, promos department had an opening. Um, uh, the girl was uh, pregnant and she was having her baby, so they just needed somebody to fill in part-time just to – all I was doing was popping tapes in, hitting play record. Mm. They would put a promo on it. I had to write down the number and mm. send it. And then um, the um, – uh, but then when she came back, another job opened – so she took that job, and they're like, hey, you've been doing it. Do you want Keep to do this? It. So I was yeah. like, okay. So wow. boom, next thing you know, I'm in television. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> next on 19, spare no expense on It's a Living, followed at 8 by Cinema 19 Primetime. These promos that you were doing, were they like for Happy Days and the reruns, or it was, was it for the Fox Kids Club? Wow, Fox Kids Club. Yeah, it was right at the beginning of Fox when we were there. I always like to say that I've been on the air as long as The Simpsons have been on the air. Oh, yeah, that's so true. So it's pretty much, we started at the same time. Uh, yeah, we would get episodic promos every Monday from Fox, and I would stick the logo on it. Hmm. And then the rest of the week, we would either, if there was movies coming up, Jaws or whatever the movies was, movie was the coming buzzer up. The Buzzer B movie. Buzzer B movie. Yeah, Rocco the Rock Dog. Mm -hmm. um, we would um, then... Um, make some kind of promo for that some things were already like in the can and we just you know like it would come down the national geographic or jacques uh, Cousteau or yeah. something like that it would come in we just stick on saturdays at eight yeah. you know and then um but then you know got creative and got to make our own the first week i was there um we were doing um a movie marathon week and it was all these bad movies it was godzilla tentacle swamp <laughs> thing and whatever so the guy that was in charge he's like hey i want a voice to counter so like first week on the job i already put my voice on oh, the air pretty good. still have that promo somewhere <laughs> on a tape <laughs> somewhere in my house but yeah wow. so uh but yeah so it's kind of, kind of fun to you know you don't always want to put yourself in but to create from the beginning, writing, going, looking at clips, come up with an idea, writing something, and editing in it to make your own, you know, commercial. Pretty good. Uh, promo for the air. And just absolutely loved it. Yeah. But then when we merged with 19 and 43 in 94, right, 93, 94, um, kind of saw the writing on the wall that I mean I'm not the best writer in the world I'm creative I'm not the best writer um, so I just went into the production department mm. so everybody I just went right into production so knowing the promo animal those guys would come in and I would just edit for them oh, nice. and I kind of knew what they want you know like yeah, oh, yeah hang on yeah. And just do it yeah. you know yeah. yeah yeah that's it you know so <laughs> unless it was something specific no. and then yeah, just took off from there. I'm, I'm more of an editor, but I do it all. You know, camera. You can do it all. Yeah, at this point, you've done now, everything. I've done it all. Yeah, yeah, pretty. Did you ever have to work on Larry Elder's show? Larry Elder's. Didn't no. he have a show on 19? At one point. No, I know. I years? talked to um, uh, Frank and Drac. I talked to Drac. Uh, hmm. He's a Facebook friend of mine. Uh, okay. But that was before a little before my time there, because I've only okay. missed really about two and a half years. Yeah, 19, they weren't on, but that on long. there at 85. And like I say, I started in 89, but probably 87 is when I started interning and stuff there. So When did 19 move from the facility that's in Shaker, that's along the line, to the one they're currently at? They're or currently, was there one in between? No, there was not one in between. So, um, again, that was like 94. That was with the merger? That was with the merger. Okay. So we they built the building downtown or 
moved into a building downtown. They moved both buildings there eventually. Okay. Took some time. Um, because I was in production, um, I moved from the 19 building to the 43 building. And oh. so I'm the only one that made that transfer. And then I was in that building by myself for about two months, three months. Wow. In Lorraine? And in, it or was in Parma, it? right across in from Parma. Parma Town Mall. Oh, yeah. Day drive. Day drive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now that building's gone. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I just always laughed at the 19er was the last the one, one out of the 43. Person. I closed the door. That's <laughs> funny. Oh, my goodness. But wow. got my own. There was a... A weird editing suite, and I had to learn how to use that editing suite. And then once that moved downtown, then I just kind of followed it along. So. Mm. Wow. And then eventually went into what we call tag directing, which was um, all those infomercials that you see, like, you know, 1-800-BUY-THE-TIME-LIFE music mm-hmm. collection of the 60s, 70s, country, whatever. So I like to say I know six seconds of every song ever <laughs> written, at least the good ones. Yeah. And they're in my head all the time, you know, <laughs> and just stick the numbers in. And then Ted Alexander, great Ted Alexander, oh, would I know read him, yeah. the, you know, call 1-800, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, you know, mm-hmm. call now. And so we did that for a long time till that eventually closed down and then just started doing audio for wow. news. And now I'm directing. Hmm. When you were, you mentioned announcers, was Mar- I know Marty Sullivan, after he stopped doing Superhost, continued announcing. W- did he continue doing that after the merger? Did no, you ever work no, with him? No, he think he right was gone at the by merger. Then. So it was really weird because with the Mallwright acquisition, um, they still um, had to hold on to, there were 10 pl- employees of WAB that were WAB employees. Oh, Everybody okay. else was coming over. Okay. But it was it was like some weird thing that hmm. even though you did stuff for 19 and 43, you were still getting paid by UAB whatever weird. LLC yeah. it was at hmm. the time. I don't know. And that happened for about two years and then hmm. finally that merger happened and Gary Short was like okay. worked for 43 even though he did all the public affairs shows on 19 and 43. Hmm. He was still getting paid by 43. It was weird yeah. and then now that's all gone now. Yeah, so, And yeah, now we're, sure. we went from Mall Right, you know, locally owned station um, or a uh, company that owned MMS at the time. Right. So we did a lot of things with MMS um, and then like XIX down in Cincinnati. We had like five TV stations and a bunch of radio. He oh. eventually sold it to Raycom and then Raycom now is Sold at the Gray Media. Yeah. And yeah. now we have 130 some stations. Yes. It's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy. All the conglomeration and the yeah, five we just bought, companies um, on everything. We just bought um, Meredith, I think, it was the company we oh, just bought. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I just saw that. Yeah, hmm. we jumped from 90 to like 130. Wow. So, And then I feel bad because those are the things you get. Well, we already have a, um, you know, a station in that city, and you can't mm. own two. Right. So yeah. now you've got to look at, well, this one's better or that one's mm. better. And so you got to sell the other one off. It's just a strange business. It is, yeah, very weird. And all the stations around here keep getting sold every few years. Right. Whereas and for you guys change uh, frequencies. Right, yeah, <laughs> frequency. We, 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 that was more of a merger, but we right. did change frequencies. And then um, – what was it? Uh, three just got sold recently, right? Within the last years, or Tegna spun off or something? Yeah, maybe a couple of years ago. And was then that eight, eight, yeah, got sold. Next Star. I think yeah. they just got Next Star, and I think somebody want. I think Fox wants to rebuy eight. I've heard that rumor. Oh, that they well, want them back or something. Because that was mm. the other part of we were Fox nineteen mm-hmm. and made a big brand on Fox nineteen, and people I think still think it's Fox nineteen. Yeah, uh, but that's when um, Fox wanted to own their own station, so right. they pulled it from us. And then, fortunately, we had bought forty three at the time, right. which were both forty three and nineteen fighting for the CBS license. Mm-hmm. So it came to us. It, it wouldn't matter. Yeah, it would came to us, came and we put it on the nineteen side because at that time the antenna was better. <laughs> yeah, and then we just bought Telemundo, and we got that oh. on our antenna. We're gonna move. So what sixty one? So, well, not sixty one. We're, it's actually Channel 3, so if you want to rescan your TVs, mm, if you've okay. got an antenna, you can watch some Telemundo and work on your Spanish. But mm-hmm. I've been, when we first got them, we only had one control room, and so I was directing a Spanish newscast. Oh, I'm my Following goodness. along the teleprompter in Spanish <laughs> oh. and trying to, you know, there's enough words that go by that says Cleveland or mm-hmm. the mayor or whatever. So you're like, okay, Lakewood, okay, I got yeah. that. Cause, and then would just hit the button when I had to mm. put in the video, to, you know, the video or go to commercial or whatever. So, but now they're kind of on their own. So Interesting. Yeah. Did, did, did you take Spanish in high school? I did, but that was, okay. you know, how many years ago? Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you follow, like you said. But, I, but you can follow English along, word. you yeah. know. It was, it was more difficult when I was teleprompting it. That mm. was a little bit different. Now they run their own teleprompter, so, you know, there's a red bar that says when the video is coming up yeah, and everything. Okay. So it's a little easier to direct that kind yeah, of thing, but still well. in Spanish. Cool. <laughs> All right.
And what can we look forward to with the Half Hour Show? Half Hour Show, we just started some new episodes. Um, uh, this month right now in October, we're doing um, a Halloween Chris, uh, Halloween display with some lights flashing. Um, I'm working on a show right now. Um, I th I, I've got two in the can, and I'm not sure which one I want to run, but I think we're going to do um, – we went up on 91, and there was one of those speed limit signs that the, the police department puts oh, up. Oh, where the, it tells you, know, you how, tells fast, you how you're fast you're going. And so we sat there and watched oh. people go by. Um, nobody sped. That's Interesting good. how many people went under the speed limit. I don't know if it was because we were there <laughs> right. and they saw us and like, what's going uh -oh. on? And they slowed Undercover down. Undercover police. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. We're, we're out in the middle of there. You see us. So hopefully that. And then um, I have my Ultimate Game Challenge show. I've been oh, working on right. that. Um, we're going to hopefully start in January with some curling. We're going to do uh, oh. a curling event. Is a that new? That will be a brand new episode starting in January. We've got about five or six of those ready to go. Um, but the curling, a friend of mine, he has a bocce court in mm, the summertime, okay. and then he puts plastic on it, and yeah. he puts ice puts and water ice in down. it and freezes it over. And then he's got these rocks that he made out of um, – bleach bottles hmm. and we throw them down the thing and Interesting. yeah it was a quite quite the production so nice. okay. hopefully we'll get that going here um my partner brian deal and myself we're gonna have to announce for that okay. maybe we'll leave this set up and we can just do it here right yeah, now you just do you it know, here it just, um, i'll relinquish this to him then okay and Very good. uh yeah we'll be right back frank you're on hi we're here at arthur treacher's fish and chips to get the inside scoop on their new chicken and chips dinner how's that chicken fella fantastic Right, but what makes it so fantastic? It's all white meat, but moist. It's boneless. You clear crunch outside. That's the big story, America. Another great meal you can't make at home from Arthur Treacher's original chicken and chips. That's fish and chips, Frank. Uh, just testing you guys. This is WAKR News Watch 23, The Late Report. Eleven new members of the Summit County Sports Hall of Fame will be inducted tomorrow night, and emceeing the affair will be a man affectionately known as Tones, and longtime WAKR sportsman Bob Wiley. I get a lot of reports coming back from, uh, from Akron here on the zips and things like that. And a very Merry Christmas. Still number one, Madonna like a virgin. That's the top 20 in contemporary music right now, Jethro Tall. The traffic and the parking problems are many from all routes around the Akron Rubber Bowl as nearly 40,000 concert goers continue to pack into the bowl. Bob Dylan, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and the Grateful Dead still to perform tonight. W-A-K-Z Stereo! Coming up next on 23 Newsday, Ohio is one step closer to having a new gun law, and now it is the taxpayers who are keeping the IRS waiting. With the storm system bearing down, how much snow can we expect? We'll tell you during the weather. The Forest had a crucial game tonight up at the Richfield Coliseum, and we're getting very close to the 1988 Winter Olympics. Stay with us. Oh, oh, pardon me, but as a small, and I do mean small businessman, how do you find out what your competition is up to? Simple. I watch a little business on 23 Newsday, Mondays at 6 p.m. See which businesses are keeping Akron Canton on the move. The telephone and the video camera. Tools of the trade in the WAKC newsroom. Join the WAKC news team by calling our news hotline anytime. We pay $23 for any news tip used on the air and $100 for the best viewer video used each week. I'm Peter Jennings, and every weeknight I hope you will join Mark Williamson and Laura Bailey for the North Ohio News Hour at 6 followed by World News Tonight here on WAKC. You're watching Family Television, WJAN TV 17, Canton. Two of the most unusual people in all the world, ladies and gentlemen, John Lennon and Yoko. And at the Big Cheese Company, everybody says... Cheese! From Fairless High School, the site of the 4th Annual Girls Silver Blue All-Star Basketball Game. The sponsors that we have, we got additional financial support uh, from Dumont Sporting Goods on McKinley Avenue in Canham. 
and uh, they have what your team needs. Suit Yourself Menswear offers you personalized service, professional tailoring, and a free tie with every suitor sport coach. When you think of Canton, you think of pro football and the Pro Football Hall of Fame right here off I-77 because this is where the pro game began. But now there's the Canton Invaders of the American Indoor Soccer Association. I've always liked outdoor soccer and I like indoor even more. The PTL Television Network presents Jim Baker. But is there praise and joy tonight? Well, I'm sick makes no difference. Well, I need money makes no difference. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. This is WDLI, TV 17, Canton. This is Kaiser Broadcasting. Channel 61, WKBS-TV, Cleveland. We're now going to have a history lesson on Channel 61. Uh, in 1968, Cleveland had three network affiliate stations, Channels 3, 5, and 8, NBC, ABC, CBS affiliates. They had all signed on in the late 40s, and they all came in very clear on most televisions. Uh, there was also a station, Channel 25. Channel 25 signed on in 1965. By 1968, it was educational television still, the NET network. Uh, it would become PBS the following year, 1969, when PBS was formed. And that's how we know it today, WVIZ, Channel 25, PBS. Those were the only stations in Cleveland, the number seven biggest city in the country in 1968. And an even bigger TV market because it also included Elyria, Akron, and Canton. And then down in Akron, there was Channel 23, an ABC affiliate, and Channel 17 in Canton. Uh, so into that fray... Kaiser Broadcasting, uh, started by Henry J. Kaiser of uh, Kaiser Shipyards and Kaiser Motors and Kaiser Permanente. Uh, Kaiser Broadcasting went on a bit of a building spree in the late 1960s. They built stations in Chicago, San Francisco, Detroit, uh, and Channel 61 in Cleveland. That's the K in WKBF. So they got everything together. They did construction over the winter of 67, 68, and they actually got delayed by a few weeks. Uh, so finally on January 19th, the station was ready to sign on January 19th, 1968, and a snowstorm delayed them even that day. Finally, later in the day, they signed on with this message, we made it Cleveland. And you'll notice there's no comma. This is how I've always seen it written. So reading it this way would make it seem that they turned something into Cleveland. We've turned something into Cleveland. We made it Cleveland. That's not what they meant, obviously. They meant, we made it, Cleveland. Uh, I have no idea if the comma was originally there or not, because there's very, very little uh, film or video or even audio still existing from Channel 61. But they signed on, and since they weren't a network affiliate, they decided they were going to distinguish themselves in other ways. Uh, they promised that there would be a live, in color, because that was a big deal back then, a uh, variety show each night. I can't really find any information about that, so I don't know that it ever happened. That was in early press materials. Uh, they distinguished themselves with Cincinnati Royals games. That was the basketball team in Cincinnati. And this is two years before the Cavs existed, so that was the only game in town up here. Uh, they were also going to show um, programs like the Flintstones, I Love Lucy, Perry Mason, uh, reruns of those. That was a lot of the schedule. Uh, a movie every evening. And then the main thing that they were going to show was a 10 o'clock newscast anchored by John Harrington. He was a reporter who came here specifically to do this in 1968, uh, but that only lasted about two years. It was the first 10 o'clock newscast in the country. It was the last one that we'd have in Cleveland, northeast Ohio, until about 1988, when they tried it on Channel 43. And most stations, as I mentioned, as now had an 11 p.m. local newscast. Well, since there was no network programming to clear on Channel 61, they did it at 10, but it never worked out. This is John in the 1970s reporting for Channel 3. When the newscast on Channel 61 went away in 1970, he headed over to Channel 3 and worked there for many years, uh, and then eventually he passed away in 2007, on my birthday, actually. So uh, by the early 70s, the station was not doing as well as they had hoped, uh, for reasons I'll go into in a moment. But there is one thing that they had that no other station had. 
Kirk and Spock fight for their lives against their mortal enemy, Thor, in Star Trek, next on Channel 61. This is Mr. Spock of the Starship Enterprise. Logic would dictate that if you are a fan of fast-moving adventure, you'll stay tuned for Star Trek. That's Star Trek, coming up next on Channel 61. Along with the reruns of Star Trek, there was also the late-night horror host that every station seemed to have back then, uh, named The Ghoul, and he was the successor to Goulardi, of course, who's very well known. Uh, I don't have any footage of The Ghoul, of course, on Channel 61. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, and apparently it was even run on the Detroit station um, that was owned by Kaiser Broadcasting at one point. Uh, but I don't seem to be able to find any of that footage. And the other thing that distinguished WKBF that kept them somewhat popular, uh, was a show called Captain Cleveland. And I'm not clear on the details, but it seems that Captain Cleveland was an unseen, off-camera being. And most of the show, this was a children's show, most of the show consisted of a ventriloquist from Cleveland named John Slowey and his puppet named Clem. And two of the clips that still exist are from that show. These are video clips. They were videoed at the time when they went out in the air and then captured on film and then used in a sales tape that Kaiser put together in the late 60s for their five new stations. And there's two clips that exist that were in that. One is with the uh, mayor of Cleveland at the time, Carl Stokes, the first African-American mayor of a major American city. And the other clip is with the vice president of the United States, Hubert Humphrey, who came here and appeared on the show. But this is the thing that, that all boys and girls ought to remember, that you can be anything that you want to be in America, if you get your education. But even if you happen to be one of the boys and girls who dropped out of school, you can always drop back in. You're a good citizen, aren't you, Clem? I'm gonna try. You know what, how to be a good citizen? How do you be a good citizen? Well, you try to be a good neighbor. Good neighbor. You try to be a good friend with your young friends. Good friends, You yeah. try to mind your daddy and your mom. I do. And when you go to school, you try to do a good job in school. Get good grades and, and uh, listen to the teacher and play fair and square when you're out in the playground. Yeah, don't cheat. And don't do any of that cheating business. No. And then always have a, uh, always like to flag and respect the flag of your country. I do. And try to be a friend with the policemen. They're, yeah, they're my friends. They ought to yeah. be your friends. Policemen ought to be the friends of every little boy and girl. Sure, and you just go right up to them and say hello and say, and I'm they say your friend. And they say hello back. Yeah, and sure. they'll help you. Yeah. Now that's part of the way of being a good citizen. There was another local show on WKBF, and it was a talk show hosted by Alan Douglas. They call him a quiz master, I think, in the uh, sales tape. And Alan Douglas was a radio personality, very controversial, outspoken, liked to get into it with guests. And uh, he'd been on radio as a, uh, in Detroit, and then he came here. And eventually he ended up on Channel 61 hosting a program. I've seen different ways that they've credited it. Sometimes it's called Alan Douglas with a question mark. Sometimes it's called Newsroom Cleveland Today. Uh, but regardless of what it's called, he had a show on Channel 61 for a couple of years. There is a brief clip existing of that that was also in the sales tape. Tonight, a no-holds-barred, no-nonsense, just-what-do-you-mean confrontation with a black militant who has written a book called Look Out, Whitey, Black Power is Gonna Get Your Mama, and a curious visit with a young woman from West Virginia who has now twice attended her own funeral and says she enjoyed them both very much. So with programs like that, how did they not stay on the air? Uh, Alan Douglas would eventually leave the station. He'd be on radio. Uh, and then he went to Channel 5, WEWS, to host a modern version, then modern, in 1972, version of the One O'Clock Club, which was a roundtable sort of uh, coffee clutch type program, if you will. And that show that Alan Douglas started hosting from its debut in 1972 was The Morning Exchange, which is very well known in Northeast Ohio. It was actually the model for Good Morning America on the ABC network, because Channel 5 was an ABC affiliate. Uh, but Alan Douglas left after uh, less than a year as host of The Morning Exchange, because his wife um, was found dead. She was uh, believed to be a suicide. And so he actually packed up, moved to New York City to be on WNBC, and uh, never quite fit in there, never cared for it, and then eventually he killed himself in the mid-70s. So it was really a tragic end to his story, uh, but he nevertheless is a footnote in the WKBF story. And the WKBF story lasted about seven years, 
Um, at one point in 1973, Kaiser Broadcasting sold part of their interest in the station to Field Communications, which also owned TV stations, and then Kaiser Field bought a portion of Channel 43, WUAB. WUAB went on just a few months after WKBF in 1968 uh, from studios in Lorraine, Cleveland, if you remember those old IDs. And WUAB had similar type of programming, not the same shows, but similar slate of shows. They weren't a network affiliate. Um, they did not have a newscast, I don't believe, until much later, the late 70s. And so uh, the two stations really battled it out because 3, 5, and 8, they were fine. They had network affiliations. Um, channel 25, Educational TV, did okay. Uh, even the channel from Akron, Channel 23, they had a radio station that helped them keep the lights on. And, of course, they covered Akron and Canton. But uh, channels 43 and 61 were really butting heads a lot. And 43, they also were partly owned by United Artists Broadcasting. And they just pulled ahead of channel 61. So finally, citing that and saying there hadn't really been a lot of market growth for channel 61, and they had really suffered by having a competitor come on right at the same time, pretty much. Uh, on April of 1975, after an episode of Perry Mason or an episode of I Love Lucy, I've still not gotten confirmation on that, uh, the station went dark. And for the next six years, the Channel 61 allocation stayed dark. Um, in 1981, it was resurrected by a whole different group of owners and completely separate called uh, WCLQ, Channel 61. And they had a similar slate of programs, reruns, movies, that sort of thing, uh, a little bit of local programming. They brought back the ghoul on WCLQ for, some, for a time. Um, and they also had, every night for a while, reruns of Saturday Night Live. The first five seasons of Saturday Night Live went into syndication in 1980, the ones with John Belushi and Gilda Radner and everybody, and, and the original cast, not the ones after. And they were hour-long edited episodes, which maybe you saw on uh, Comedy Central or E! Uh, in the 1990s or 2000s. So uh, here now is one last piece of Channel 61 history, not from the WKBF days, but from when it came back in 1981 as a completely separate station named WCLQ. Today that allocation is for uh, the Univision affiliate. And for many years, from about the mid-80s until about 2000, it was the Home Shopping Network. But in the WCLQ days, when they had... Saturday Night Live reruns on every weeknight. Here's a commercial from that era. Rock, this is a great place to find Foxes! Hey, Foxes, you want to go back to a swinging bachelor band with two wild, wild and crazy guys? <laughs> Too bad that Foxes will miss Saturday night on Channel 61. It's on every Monday through Friday at 7 o'clock. Saturday night, sure. Walk this way. It must be our after show! Check. Check. One, two, three. Welcome to Goularity. <laughs> <laughs>